In this video, we're going to cover a couple of the common graphs that we're going to see as far as cylindrical coordinates are concerned. Do keep in mind that when I'm referring to cylindrical coordinates, I am referring to... Oh, no, that's... Oh, well, hang on. Let's try that again. Rho, theta, and phi. So let's, uh, let's go over the basic examples of where any one of these is set equal to a constant. So first possibility, let's say rho is equal to a. Now, in terms of uh, interpreting this, in terms of the uh, RZ trace, if we say rho is equal to a constant, what we're saying is that we're talking about all of the points that are a nice constant A units away from the origin. Now, if I were to take this shape and rotate it about the z-axis, I would get a sphere out of this. It is because of this that, uh, you know, we're dealing with something called spherical coordinates. Now, if I wanted to actually prove that this winds up being a sphere, I would have to work with this equation. I could start by squaring both sides of the equation to wind up with a row squared. Row squared converts back into Cartesian pretty nicely. Rho squared is equal to x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to a squared. And that, of course, winds up giving us a sphere center at the origin with a radius of a, which is hopefully what we would expect. Uh, in the video on cylindrical coordinates, we talked about what theta equals a constant would be. That would be a half plane. So we'll just go ahead and go straight to phi is equal to a constant. So the corresponding RZ trace for phi being equal to a constant would look like the following. We set an angle, phi, like so. And then we take this and we rotate it about the z-axis. When we rotate a straight line like this about the z-axis, it is going to wind up giving you... So I'll draw a nice slanty line like that and then rotate about the z-axis that is going to give you part of a cone. I suppose technically this would be a half cone because in calculus we consider the cone to be both the top side as well as the bottom side. Now a couple quick cases for us here. If we are referring to alpha being between 0 and pi over 2, we could say that this is the top half of a cone. If alpha is between pi over 2 and pi, we could say that this is the bottom half. That would be a part that is below the xy plane. Whereas if we had that alpha was equal to pi over 2, that would actually just be the xy plane. <clears throat> What I'd like to do is demonstrate how this works uh, through a couple of additional steps. So once again, if we have that phi is equal to a constant, our goal is to convert this back into Cartesian coordinates or cylindrical coordinates would probably work as well. We do have a conversion involving the tangent of phi. So I'm going to take the tangent of both sides. So tangent of phi is equal to tangent of alpha. And as long as phi is between 0 and pi, that will give us a unique solution here. So tangent of phi, according to a previous video, is equal to r over z. I'm going to multiply both sides by z and divide both sides by the tangent of alpha. So we're going to wind up with z is equal to r times the cotangent of alpha. Now, this is pretty demonstrative of the fact that this is going to be a cone when you consider it in cylindrical coordinates. We went through a specific example where the cotangent of alpha is equal to 1 in the cylindrical video. What we could do at this point is square both sides and say that z squared is equal to r squared times the cotangent squared of alpha and then perform a conversion on the r squared. We would wind up with z squared is equal to cotangent squared alpha times x squared plus y squared. This would, of course, be a quadric surface. I see that the xy trace is going to be a circle, the xz trace is going to be a hyperbola, and the yz trace is going to be a hyperbola as well, letting us know that, indeed, this will be 
a cone. Other surfaces in spherical coordinates, we'll take a look at converting some equations.